Now the advantage to being agreeable then is that you're good in teams and you're very much likely to give other people credit. The, bad, the downside of being agreeable is that you're not very good at putting forward your own interests. And so one of the things that predicts salary across time, for example, is agreeableness, and it predicts it negatively. And so it's part of the reason why women get paid less than men. And this is something for the women in the class to really listen to. Because you, how you get paid across time depends on a very large number of things, right? It depends on your skills and your abilities and your position and your social network and all of that. But the other thing it depends on is whether or not you actually go ask for money. Or maybe that you don't even ask. Because actually you don't ask for money. You tell people that you need to be paid more or something they don't like will happen. And I don't mean as a threat. I mean that you have to be willing, when you're negotiating, to have an alternative. You go talk to your boss, who isn't going to give you money, because everyone wants money, right? It's a competitive game. You're going to have to, be, you're going to, have to go there and say, look, here's what I do. Here's why it's useful. Here's why you have to give me more money. And this is my opportunities if you don't. And then you're not taking your boss's money anyways, because it's very, seldom, very frequently the case that he's working for a whopping big company. But he needs an excuse to give you money, because everyone's asking for money all the time. And so you have to put your case forward powerfully and disagreeably. Now, you don't want to do it too disagreeably, because then he's going to think that you're a son of a bitch, and maybe he's not going to give you anything, and maybe you'll get fired for being mouthy and all of that. And that certainly happens to people who are too disagreeable. You've got to get the balance right. But it's definitely the case. And the other thing that happens to women that's also worth noting, and this is probably because they're higher in negative emotion, is they tend to underestimate their own utility in business settings. Right? Because if you're trying to evaluate what you're like, and you're more tilted towards negative emotion, then the things that you do that are wrong are going to stand out more, more on the foreground than the things that you do that are right. So if you go into a negotiation and you're uncertain already, because you have self-doubts, and then you're agreeable in the negotiation, what's going to happen is that you're not going to win as often. And winning in, in, in a business setting or in a career development setting means more opportunity for promotion and more revenue generated. Now, the downside of that, of course, is as you climb the business hierarchy is that you also have to take on more responsibility. And that responsibility is sometimes unpleasant as well, especially to people who are agreeable, because you're not necessarily liked if you're in a position of authority. And agreeable people really like to be liked. It's their primary motiv motivator, because they're concerned about the maintenance, I would say, of, 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 of intimate, positive relationships. I mean, that also makes them conflict avoidant. Apply for like 10 jobs. You don't have to take them. But maybe you have to go to an interview or two or three or four. And maybe there's a bunch of opportunities out there for you that you didn't even know about. And maybe someone offers you a job. And so now, now you can go to your boss and say, here's the situation I'm in here at work. Um, here's my evaluation of the problems in relationship to me. Here's what I could do for you if you gave me a 40% raise and the opportunity to progress, but I'd like to see a plan for that. And um, I've been looking for other opportunities before conducting this discussion, and I have some. Mm -hmm. Well, then, if your boss treats you with contempt at that point and doesn't listen, then perhaps he or she is a little more narcissistic than might be optimal, and it's time to find a new job. But this isn't something you do trivially. And so... When you're doubtful, say, you're trapped, you ask yourself, well, why am I trapped? And that's a hard question, right? Because some of it's your own inadequacy, a lot of it. And all of the part of it that you can deal with is your own inadequacy. So even if it's unfair, you know, even if you're hemmed in for any number of reasons, inappropriate, like ethnically predicated oppression, let's say, or... Maybe you live at, you're in a, a workplace that really is sexist in some fundamental sense. Well, that's not good. It's not just. It's not fair. It's, it's not meritorious. All of those things. Man, maybe you shouldn't be there. But what you can do to begin with is every bloody thing you possibly can do to put yourself in the most virtuous and powerful negotiating position possible. And you have to think like a snake in some sense. To do that, you got to get the details right. You have to be prepared to bite, and, and you have to have your eyes on the prize, so to speak. And people aren't taught this sort of thing ever, 